Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a whole house decluttering Q&A today. After I posted my video about what I've learned, the lessons that I've learned so far in going through our house and decluttering it systematically, room by room, drawer by drawer, cabinet by cabinet, I got a ton of questions, particularly on Instagram, but across all platforms, people just were messaging me and private messaging me and they just had so many questions about what that process looked like and specific questions and then more broad questions. So today I thought I would answer them. I collected them. I have them here on my phone, so I will be referencing that. I'm standing in my closet, as you can tell, and um, I'm gonna have to be checking um, my screen that I can see here quite a bit. So if you see my eyes shift, because the lighting in here is obviously all artificial lighting, we don't have a window. And so um, I just have to make sure that I stay in focus. But I thought this was a good place to film. It's a really dark and rainy day outside. So sitting in front of a window wouldn't be much help anyway. And I just am obsessed with my rainbow, <laughs> my rainbow closet. So that is the story. So I have all of these questions here. Um, let me go ahead and start answering them and um, hopefully this will help those of you who are also diving into some kind of decluttering project or journey. I got a ton of questions about Facebook Marketplace because I have had such success on Facebook Marketplace and there have been many people saying they're nervous to try Facebook Marketplace or they've never had success with it or whatever. I will say first of all that I have run an Etsy shop for years now and I regularly ship out packages and I'm regularly listing items online and all of that. So I'm extremely comfortable and familiar with that type of business. So it's not nerve wracking to me in any way. Um, the porch pickups are were new and different for me, but all in all, I am very comfortable with listing things. I'm going to create a whole separate video just about Facebook Marketplace. But the best thing I can say is that when you find an item in your home that still has value that you'd like to sell, search on Facebook Marketplace the name of that item and then sort when you on the left hand side of the screen it says availability and you want to change it from available to sold and that way you can see what item similar or exactly like the item that you're looking to sell what they have sold for in your area. So if you're thinking of listing something for $10 and then you go to sold and you see that that same item has been listed and sold recently for $30 or $40, you may want to change your pricing or vice versa. So that can be really helpful. I do do porch pickups a lot, which means that I have people either send me money through Venmo or leave cash under my doormat and then I leave whatever the item is at the time of their pickup just on the front porch so I don't interact with them, I'm not opening my door to them, nothing like that. The other quick little thing I will say about Facebook Marketplace is that we do have home cameras and that makes me feel really comfortable because I can very easily see when someone comes and picks it up, I can make sure that they put money under the mat. I can even talk to them through our cameras. So if you don't have cameras and you don't live in maybe the safest area, I would recommend getting cameras first. Um, so there's a lot of different things to consider, which I can talk about in a separate video, but I highly encourage you to jump in. In the past two weeks, I've probably made close to $800 or $1,000 on Facebook Marketplace. And we've had a few items that are a little bit of a higher priced item, but a lot of the things that I've been selling have been for 20 bucks or less. And I'm still, you know, it adds up. So that's that about Facebook Marketplace. Lots of questions about that. And I think it's, it will be a good video at, at some point. I also had a lot of questions about how I am getting this decluttering done with little kids. This person specifically said, how are you getting it done? I have an 11 month old and I feel like I'm drowning. Me too. <laughs> I totally understand. So the thing is that the approach that I have taken this time that's been different from any other time in the past is that I have truly allowed myself to do little by little. So oftentimes I am just spending 10 or 15 minutes in a day and that's it. So I'll open up a kitchen cabinet or a drawer somewhere and I'll just pull everything out, clean out the drawer, throw away the things that are trash, expired, that kind of thing sort the stuff that needs to be donated and then list whatever I'm going to sell on Facebook Marketplace right then and there and then I move on with my day and it's just like 10 or 15 minutes. My kids also both still nap and so oftentimes I'll have between one and three hours of an overlapping nap during the day and I use that time for sure. 
and then of course in the evening after they go to bed so it's just been piecemeal it's not I don't have like a magical situation it's just been a little here or there the other thing is that I can get things done sometimes on days when they are in really good moods and they're playing with each other and things are going great I can totally get a drawer done or a cabinet done in 10 minutes while they're playing at my feet so that's how I'm, it's not a magical answer there's not like a perfect way to do it it's just you just have to fit it in in little tiny bits as you go that's really the only way to get it done it's just do it little by little when you can and it does add up at first it doesn't feel like anything's getting done and then after a couple of weeks you start looking around your house and there's a difference and that is to me very motivating I have quite a few questions about physical books so here's the thing when I before I moved into this house, I had moved, good grief, so many times in just a few years. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, in about three to four years, I had moved six times. And something about moving is that it forces you to declutter because you're not about to move things that you're not using. And as much as I love having books around the home, they are so heavy and so cumbersome to move. And so I donated well before this decluttering that I'm doing now, I donated a lot of my books. And then after we moved into this house, I had like a few books and then I wasn't really reading. I had already read them or I wasn't going to read them. So I donated them. So we really don't have very many physical books. I use a Kindle. I have already read in January 10 books. I'm reading my 11th. I am an avid reader, but I just find the Kindle is a lot more conducive to this stage of life. And it also really is a lot more minimalistic in terms of decluttering and whatnot. Riley has a handful of books. We just don't keep a whole bunch of books on hand. After we read them, we oftentimes give them to family or friends to read, like loan them out, but give them to them. We don't expect them back or we go ahead and donate. So that's not physical books for us. Now physical books for the kids is a project that I tackled just a couple of nights ago and it was a big one um, because I have always had the more is more is more mentality with regards to kids books. I think because in my mind more books means a higher likelihood that they will be avid thriving readers. But what I realized was that there were just so many and a lot of them were not great books. We didn't read them a lot. I don't even really actually know where they came from. I don't know if they were freebies and different things, but I would like read the story and be like, this story doesn't even really make sense. So I went, I took all of the books in our house and went through them. And then I put some of the favorites up in the playroom and then Nora's favorites in her room and Colin's favorites in his room. We still have a lot of books in our house. We are not, it's not like there's only a handful. Um, there's quite a bit, you know, I'm, and I'm happy about that. I want our kids to have a nice children's library, so to speak. Um, but we did get rid of two trash bags worth of books that we just never read or that were duplicates and those are all getting donated. So from a kid's book perspective, that was definitely a more challenging task to tackle rather than adult books because we simply just don't have very many adult books. I use my Kindle. Riley listens to books on Audible 99% of the time and that's digital as well. I had several questions about what the hardest category for me is or has been by far the hardest category for me is anything to do with my kids. So their baby clothes, Nora's little beautiful tiny little 12 month little smocked dresses. Oh my goodness, like baby clothes are really hard. And frankly, I have not gone through a lot of them. I did get rid of some I have gone through some and donated them actually specifically to two families there is a family that I know who just fostered brought a foster baby into their home a little girl when she was three days old and so I gave them two or three huge boxes of infant baby girl clothes and then I we had a friend who brought a little boy home and so we did the same thing with them. Um, but then those like middle sizes, like six to 12 months, 12 to 18 months, I haven't done those yet. The, it's very difficult for me. It's just very difficult for me. And I know my children don't live in the memories of those clothes. And so my plan is to keep their coming home from the birth center outfit. So both of their little like coming home outfits and um, maybe just one or two other of my favorites of theirs. Um, it's really hard. 
The thing about children's clothes is are that or any clothing is that when it sits in storage, it deteriorates. And so it's not as if many of these clothes are will not last to where, you know, my grandchildren could one day wear them. Most likely not. So what I have found is that it's easier on my heart to let go of them in little bits because it's very challenging and give them to people who I know can use them. And then when they send me and my sister, I've donated, donated, so to speak, I've given her hand-me-downs for Eliza, her daughter from Nora. Um, when Allie, my sister, sends me a picture of her daughter in one of Nora's old clothes, the level of joy that I receive from seeing that photo and like the flood of memories is so much more special than that piece of clothing sitting in a dusty box deteriorating. So it's not easy for me, but that's how I'm going to do clothing. I've gotten rid of most other baby things. Um, swaddles, lots of blankets. I, I need to do a second pass through their blankets, but that one's a little bit sentimental for me. Um, but I've done a first pass. Um, Nora's diaper pail, because she's no longer in diapers. Um, I'm trying to think what else. There's been quite a few baby items like that. The bath seat, all that kind of stuff. I've sold or donated all of that. Um, it's not easy, but it's worth it. Lots of questions about my husband Riley. Has Riley taken part in the process? What do you do when your husband doesn't have the same answers to your decluttering questions? Um, has Riley been on board or did you have to convince him? Um, does Riley do you and Riley tend to agree on what what needs to be thrown away, kept or donated? I know that can be hard for some couples. Many, many, many questions about specifically Riley and my decision making. So if I had been doing this several years ago, we've been, we will have been married this summer for eight years. So we've been together for, you know, married for eight years, and then we dated and were engaged for another two. So we've been you know, in each other's lives for about a decade. And I obviously know him better than anyone and vice versa. Um, if I had attempted to do something this, this kind of a undertaking, even just like three or four years ago, I would have not handled it the way that I've handled it now. The way that I'm handling it now is I'm staying in my own lane. I am decluttering things that are in the home because I am really the manager of our home and the stuff that comes in and out. I'm decluttering children's items and I'm decluttering my own items. Um, I am really letting him be. The fun thing is, is that it's really like a quiet leadership because what has ended up happening is he sees me going through my closet and then he went through his closet and then I went through the front coat closet and I will say things like, hey, I just went through the front coat closet and I sold four of my coats on Facebook Marketplace that I no longer wear. Do you think there's any up there that you don't wear anymore? And he is like very willing. Um, he doesn't like to be pushed into getting rid of things. I know that about him. And he is more sentimental about objects than I am. And so he is more of a, what I would describe as more of a pack rat. He would probably just say that he likes to keep sentimental things. And it's like, that's not wrong. So there, if ever there's a disagreement between the two of us, the disagreement is that I want to get rid of the item or group of items and he does not. That's pretty much always the case. And that's okay. There are times when it's frustrating for him and there are times when it's frustrating for me, but ultimately I'm not going to let decluttering be a source of like major tension in our marriage because it's not and so like I just did the garage and I got rid of tons of stuff I had a bunch of crafting stuff out there we had old just all kinds of stuff broken air mattresses and all this stuff that I was throwing away and donating and after I went through and did all the things that belonged to me or I had some level of propriety over he went through and he got rid of all kinds of stuff and I was like and I didn't tell him to do it. He just did it because that's what we were doing that day. So I think leading by example and not pressuring your significant other is the way to go. I think when you start pushing them, it, I don't think it really ends that well because I think a lot of people will end up just shutting down. Um, the other piece of that puzzle is that his mom moved from his childhood home that she's been living in for about 35 years that they you know he was raised in with his sisters and she just moved out of that home last October so it's only been a few months that home was chock full of sentimental 
drawings from elementary school and his kindergarten diploma and baby clothes and toys from his childhood, DVDs, CDs, records, all of the things from his childhood that had been in the garage, in the attic, in back closets, under beds, in the back of dressers, all had to come out because she was moving. And many of you know that when those things happen, what ends up happening is they get dropped off on your doorstep and there's just tubs and bins and boxes of stuff that you are like, I don't know if I want this in my home. And your spouse or whoever has the relationship with the, that stuff doesn't even know what it is because they haven't seen it in decades. <laughs> So that was a bit tricky for me because I obviously don't want to ever say like you need to get rid of all this stuff, but also some of it needs to go. So it was a situation where I just sort of like kept myself to myself um, for a little while and then eventually did have to just maybe a little gently like, hey, is, do you want these DVDs? Like we don't use DVDs anymore, right? We just stream everything. I'm like, do you want these DVDs? And he's like, no, I guess I don't really need the DVDs. I'm like, okay. I just try to be real low pressure with it. Um, but he's just really sentimental like y'all his work table out in our garage has a um a framed <laughs> i should show you it, it when i saw it i was cracking up i was like riley his framed kindergarten diploma i said now what is this doing here and he's like well it's my kindergarten diploma so like if that were my kindergarten diploma i gotta tell you i would take a picture of it with my phone and toss it but it's not mine so there's a lot of words about that i it's it's challenging when you're like this is just not worth keeping in our home but ultimately it's not my say if it's not my stuff it's not my say this is a great question and one that i got a lot something uh, the questions that came in about this were along the lines of how do you get over the guilt of having spent money on something and then getting rid of it and you're like losing that money? I do think Facebook Marketplace or selling anywhere online, whether it's Poshmark or a local garage sale or a church sale or however you do it, um, that to me that has helped to recoup some of that money and not have it just completely gone. But Dawn from The Minimalist Mom, who is she has just been like my guiding light through this process. She often says you need to give yourself grace because you just don't know sometimes what's going to work in your home and in your life and what's not. And we need to just realize that if you buy something and you want it to work and it doesn't, holding on to it just makes it not work even more because now it's cluttering in your space, it's mocking you because every time you look at it you think I, I spent money on that. Mm -hmm. And truly, there have been several items like that that have been hard to get rid of that I'm so glad that I did. Um, I think th that the more you do it, the easier it gets. The other piece of the puzzle here is that when you get rid of something that you spent money on that you're not using, it makes you think twice and triple and four times as much the next time you're going to purchase something, especially a larger ticket item or a physically larger item that you'll visually see in your space every day. It really, I have just become so much pickier. I feel like I haven't been shopping hardly at all unless it's something that I want super, super badly and it's specific. And even like, I ordered some clothing the other day from Target and um, I tried, one of the things was this, isn't this cute? Little zip up, love the color, one of my autumn colors. Um, but I ordered this and like four or five other things and I only loved this one. The other ones I liked, I sent all of the other ones back and returned them. I would have never done that three months ago. I would have been like, well, I like them, I'll keep them all. Now I'm like, I don't wanna manage that inventory. I don't want it to look at those items hanging in my closet that I'm not wearing. I don't want to be decluttering them at the end of this year, knowing that I spent good money on them and really never used or wore them because I only just liked them. It just changes your mindset. So it's not easy, but I think you know, there's a way to move through it. I had a few people ask questions about moving. Like, are you decluttering to get ready for moving? Or was this just a separate goal? This was genuinely just a separate goal. Now, a huge perk of this decluttering process will be hopefully, 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 sometime this year, we will finally find a house. If you're new around here, we have been house hunting actively for about two, well, actively on and off for about two and a half years. And it's just been a real challenge to find what we're looking for even though I don't think what we're looking for is all that wild and crazy. We just have had a really hard time in the neighborhood or neighborhoods that we're interested in finding a, a home that will suit our needs. The perk will be when we finally hopefully find that home and we sell this one, 
hopefully moving. I know it will be. We'll be so much significantly more streamlined, more simplified, because we won't have clutter. We won't be moving clutter. We'll only be moving the essentials of our life and things that we use all the time. So um, that's that. On the moving topic, someone else asked, does this change what you're looking for in regards to a new house? Actually, it does. As we've gotten rid of our stuff, we realize that we are actually not bursting at the seams in this house as much as we thought we were. We genuinely felt like we needed so much more square footage and we were not fitting into this house and there was just not enough storage and there just wasn't enough space. And there are certain areas in the house where in a new home I would really like to have some more square footage for a variety of reasons, but the reasons now are not for storage and for more stuff. So it does help us a lot when we're looking because we are not looking, we were looking at a higher square footage range and we've pulled that down. And now we're looking at a lower square footage range as far as the homes that we're interested in. There, there are definitely, um, you know, it's, it's less expensive to buy a home that has less square footage as a general rule. So that's helpful for us. Um, but also just realizing that we actually don't need like double the space. We just need less stuff. A few questions about where to start. Okay, my best tip on where to start, and this is what I did the first couple of days, is anytime that a box comes in, so like for we have two little kids and our son wears diapers. So when we would have a big empty box that his diapers used to be in, or when we would get an Amazon order and we would have a big empty Amazon box or whatever, all of those boxes, instead of breaking them down and recycling them, I made it a rule that they couldn't leave the house until they were full of stuff to donate. And so I would just bring, put the box like on our kitchen table or somewhere like in a central location in our home and little by little throughout the day, I would throw stuff in it, throw stuff in it, throw stuff in it. And by, it would be amazing to me because by the end of the day, those boxes would be completely full and then I would donate them. And then those, that was two more boxes of stuff out of our house. So that's a really easy way to just put decluttering into your sort of day to day. It's just to take any, just make it a rule that any box that comes in, you're going to fill it up before it goes back out. Um, I also think starting in areas that are simple, like your silverware drawer, I think a lot of people don't probably have like tons of clutter in the drawer where they hold their silverware, like their flatware. So, you know, you might go in, there might be like a cheese knife or two that's kind of janky that you need to get rid of, or, you know, a couple of steak knives that you never use or whatever. And you can like get rid of those things. Start easy. You don't have to start with baby sentimental stuff. Don't start there. Start with easy stuff. Um, I also think making a list is really helpful, a list of things you want to declutter and a list of things you have decluttered because that helps to kind of keep you on track and keep you motivated. But the idea is you just have to start. Open up one drawer, pull everything out of it, trash what you don't need or that's broken, expired, whatever. Donate it, list stuff on Facebook Marketplace or don't. If that's a huge barrier, just don't for the first little while. Just donate it, you can do that later. So that's that. Ooh, this is a good question. How are you dealing with decluttering unwanted gifts? Gifts are so tricky. They are so tricky. Um, I have always been very much of the mindset that when I give someone a gift, the act of giving it to them and them receiving it is the gift. And then I don't want them to ever feel beholden to hold on to that item for the rest of their days. If it doesn't suit their life or if they use it for a season or if it wears out or if it could be better suited in someone else's home, I really hope that they are able to let go of it and move on um, because I'm not here to like manage what's in your house. I do know that can be really tricky for some people. Um, I have heard stories of friends who, you know, have had family members come over and make comments like where's this or that that I purchased for you um, or for your kids more probably more likely for your kids um, knowing that we were going into this that I was going into decluttering for Christmas last year I just in a really kind and gentle way there's there's a way to do this tactfully and there's a way to do this that feels really controlling and I really try to lean towards doing it tactfully like for example my sister-in-law Emily said what do the kids want for Christmas and she had all these ideas. And I was like, I love those ideas, but honestly, they would love a slide. I really wanna put, we have a tiny backyard. I really wanna put in a slide outdoors that they can go and slide, they both love to slide. And I said, just the slide for the two of them would be a perfect gift. 
non-clutter. We don't want to get rid of it. We will use it. It's stored outside of the home. Like bonus, bonus, bonus. Love it so much. She was like, great. So she bought a slide. We put it in the backyard. The kids play with it constantly whenever it's nice enough outside to go outside. It's been wonderful. Someone asked about decluttering my clothes because she said that she's very emotionally attached to her clothes. I'm not. I don't get very emotionally attached to my clothes. In fact, I just donated the shoes I wore to my wedding. I kept my wedding dress and veil. Um, I'd like to do a photo shoot with Nora at some point in it. Oh my gosh. Um, I kept my wedding dress and veil, but everything else, I'm like, I don't need to hold on to that. I also think that part of that is that I have fluctuated sizes majorly in the past few years. I was one size when I got married, and then I was another size when I was pregnant with Nora, and then postpartum with Nora, and then I lost some weight, and then I got pregnant again with Colin, and then I gained a lot of weight, and then I am postpartum with Colin now and trying to lose it again. So I've been all these sizes, and so clothes just have been very much pragmatic coming in and out of my life as they need to, um, because they just fit me and then they don't fit me and I've just had to have a very loose attachment to clothing um, but I understand we all have our things that are hard to get rid of for sure okay this will be the last question today because we're about at the 30 minute mark um, and that question is what are you doing with like seasonal items um, Disney items that kind of thing so I'm using bins for that so actually up here I'll show you I'll do a little pan I have a bin for swimsuits for travel like packing cubes and things like that. One for Disney that has Disney specific stuff. And then the last one is for beach specific stuff like beach towels, our beach bag, beach floaties, all that kind of stuff. Same in the garage. We have a bin that is for Valentine's Day and Easter decor and one that's for autumn decor. And then we have like three big bins for Christmas decor. Um, and that's how we're doing it. And we're using these awesome labels. I will link them below. I highly recommend them. You can print pictures on them. I use them for the kids toys because they can visually, I just love them. Um, and that's what I'm doing. And, and what I'm using is the container method, meaning if it doesn't fit in that container or for Christmas, we have like, like I said, like three containers, but for the other holidays, I did get rid of some, some decor items because I can't manage three bins of decor items for Valentine's Day and Easter. I simply cannot. One is enough. It's more than enough. <laughs> and so that's kind of how I'm handling that. Um, it's, it's a challenge. I love to decorate our home seasonally, but I don't love managing the inventory. And so I just am streamlining it. The last thing I'll say um, that I had a few questions about is that people have heard me on my Instagram subscriber stories talking about the onion method and people are like, what is the onion method? The basic idea is that as you go through your house, you don't have to go to the core of the onion. You don't have to go bare bones right away. The idea is the outer layer of the onion represents things in your home that are broken, that are obviously trash, that are expired, that are unsafe, and you get rid of those and it's not very emotional. And then the second layer are things that don't fit you well, that are really old, that you really should replace, whatever. And then it gets to more like things that you just like and don't love and then maybe like the core of the onion for you is like sentimental items for me baby items baby clothes that kind of thing so the idea is you don't have to start at the core you can go through your house and just get rid of obvious trash obvious things and then slowly chip away and then what ends up happening is over time your home starts feeling like it can breathe we have experienced that just yesterday I sold a little end table um, I've been selling a lot lately. Today I'm selling Nora's diaper pail. Um, there are some entertaining like platters and things that I've been selling um, because we just don't need, I just need a couple. I don't need, I had all these things and in my brain I've been keeping them for all these years for when we host Thanksgiving and we've literally never hosted Thanksgiving. The only time that we've done Thanksgiving here is when I had just had Colin the month before and so I was like a month postpartum and so my parents came here and we had just like a little very relaxed Thanksgiving dinner with just my parents and me and my husband and of course our two little kids. And then with that, you know, it's four adults. We did not need like enormous platters. I don't know what I why in my mind like fantasy self behavior I'm like oh when we host like this enormous Thanksgiving I'm not hosting an enormous Thanksgiving anytime soon so I got rid of things like that um anyway I hope that was helpful I, ho I hope that that resonated with some of you and some of the questions that y'all have had um really good luck on your decluttering journey I will put up a Facebook marketplace video as soon as I can it will probably be in the next month um there's some footage I'm going to need to take of that and some like screen grabs of how I set up the listings and stuff um 
but I, th but I, I think that's a worthwhile video because it's, it's a really good tool for getting things out of your house, but making a little money back on it. Anyway, I hope you guys are having an awesome day. I will talk to you soon. Happy decluttering.